Well, this morning, I had yet another patient uh, decline metformin based on what they saw in the Mayo Clinic website. Here's what the Mayo Clinic website says about metformin. <clears throat> Under certain conditions, too much metformin can cause lactic acidosis. It also goes on to, it, it's worded poorly as well. It says the symptoms of lactic acidosis are severe and quick to appear and usually occur when other health problems not related to the medicine are present, are present and are se very severe, such as a heart attack or kidney failure. So uh, English majors out there are not going to like or, or authors are not going to like the way that that's worded. And those of us who are in touch with the science aren't going to like the way that's worded either. There are a lot of people out there that need metformin. The CDC, for example, says that uh, out of every 12 or 13 people that need metformin, only one is actually on it. And this is one of the major reasons why. You've got uh, organizations like Mayo saying it's dangerous, especially dangerous regarding lactic acid and lactic acidosis. Um, <clears throat> let's gonna, I'll tell you the rest of the story on that in just a minute. Um, but just a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R. -E I'm the uh, medical director for, uh, physician, uh, for PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability Prevention. Um, <clears throat> and uh, have been doing preventive medicine for 30 years. Uh, started off as an ER doc, went on to Hopkins to get training in preventive medicine, and uh, basically ended up running the program there at Hopkins in preventive medicine. So, what's the rest of the story on lactic acidosis and metformin? Again, Mayo Clinic says it's dangerous and it happens. Well, have you ever heard of the Cochrane studies? Cochrane, <clears throat> the Cochrane Organization for Healthcare uh, Science is very similar to Wikipedia. It's totally voluntary, but you have tens of thousands of medical scientists all over the world who review the state of the uh, literature, state of the science on, a, on an important topic like this one. This is not the first study. I believe they've done, done this twice. I think in 04 and again in uh, 10 or 11. Risk of fatal and non-fatal lactic acidosis with metformin uh, use in diabetics. So here's what they said. Basically, no reported cases of lactic acidosis in 70, 000, over 70,000 person years of use. So they're saying, look, we're not seeing it. I understand. It's clear why the fear uh, happened. Um, the class of medications that metformin is a group of, the biguanides, they typically have that. And the other uh, medicines in the biguanide class have lactic acidosis, but not metformin. So the recommendation from this Cochrane review of, uh, I think this was, this was the one from 2011, uh, the recommendation is uh, there is no evidence from these studies to indicate that there is a risk for lactic acidosis. So, well, that's from Cochrane. How about another big name here? How about JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association? Probably the num maybe the number two medical uh, journal in the world, um, after New England Journal, of course. Uh, they did a similar study and a similar review. Metformin uh, uh, in patients with type 2 diabetes and kidney disease. Now, if you're gonna, if you're gonna actually have lactic acidosis with metformin, it would be with kidney disease because that's how it's cleared through the kidneys. And here's the original box warning. Basically, it says um, it's contraindicated in it in people with. Uh, any kind of renal dysfunction or people uh, over age 80. When you actually look at the numbers though, this was a lower uh, estimate here. It said, um, given their review, they saw uh, lactic acidosis every 23 to 30,000 person years. 
for metformin. So different number, but they also said they saw lactic acidosis in 18 to 20,000 person years for people not on metformin. So again, less lactic acidosis for people on metformin than, than not. Again, a very, very strong safety signal in the literature, in the science for metformin. Yet, uh, Mayo is turning people away from metformin based on this issue on a daily basis. Uh, they, they came up with some recommendations, and again, these are for patients with kidney disease. I typically, if a patient's uh, GFR filtration rate is 45 um, or less, I don't have a comfort level doing it. Um, and again, it's just because we're not that clear yet on, on that sp subpopulation, but, but anybody over 45. Um, <clears throat> these guys say it's fine over, over 30 if you've already done it before. Um, again, I'm a little bit more careful than they are, even though... Uh, I'm clearly on their side. Now, I'm not the only one. You know, <clears throat> if there's anybody that's going to be slow about changing something, it's going to be the federal government. And look, even the FDA has changed their box warnings on metformin because of the research that I just quoted. Basically, what they're saying is we've concluded from the studies in the medical literature that metformin can be used safely. And this is even in patients with uh, impaired kidney function, mild impairment of their kidney function. And they've asked for changes in the metformin labeling, their box labeling, as a result of that literature. So, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe you heard a little bit of irritation in my voice, a little bit of frustration earlier when I was talking about the Mayo Clinic website. I'm sorry, I have to say it. Um, I think their website is wrong. They should not be saying and phrasing the way they have that lactic acidosis is a significant um, problem for uh, metformin patients. My apologies to those of you that are offended but I'm sorry, I'm seeing too much d damage on the other side of this thing where people need help and they're refusing it based on this kind of information. Or I would say misinformation. Thank you for your interest.